Hey gamers. Oh god, where's my energy? Come on, Lily. Try that again. Hey gamers. <laughs> uh Hello and welcome. I'm gonna be playing some uh shorter games today. Um that I've really wanted to check out but have been too short. I didn't want to dedicate a full like stream to it. Um because that sounds hard for games that are only, like, an hour long. Uh, I wanted to start off with this, um, because I've seen a lot of people talking about how it's, like, a really nice, like, representation of the, the industry, um, and I saw someone talking about how it really goes into, like, some of the greener, um, methods of dealing with, uh, dead relatives. Um, I will say off the top... Hi! Hello! Welcome! I'm gonna say off the top that this is obviously going to deal heavily with death. Um, I'm sure that there is going to be some depictions of dead bodies. Uh, but it should be chill. This music rules. It's nice. The game is beautiful. And yeah, it's pretty short, so, uh... Well, let me make sure I don't have to turn on... Ooh... Kinda cute. Uh, I'm assuming... Oh, wait. <laughs> probably doesn't have subtitles, because it probably doesn't have that much voice acting. Oops. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, let's just jump in. September 14th, 10.15 a.m. Oh, it's cute. Okay, it's like a little sim. I mean, I knew it was a little sim, but it's got the, like, clickies. Click to move. Okay. Come on, Lily, pay attention. Three, hello and welcome to our new funeral director. From Matthew Jeffrey to Charlie. Welcome, Charlie. Nice to meet you. My name's Matthew, and I'm mainly going to be the man who delivers the bodies to you and helps with some of the more heavy lifting. Ever hear that joke about a hearse driver? I'll tell it to you when I come by in a bit. Looking forward to working together. I think you'll enjoy working here. Amy is a sweetheart, but she runs a tight ship. Nothing you can't handle, I'm sure. Shh, it's a secret. <laughs> Uh, she wouldn't have hired you otherwise. Cheers and good luck. Matthew J, funeral director. Rose and Daughters Funeral Home. Hello and welcome to our new funeral director. From Amy Rose. To Rose and Daughters staff. Hello everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our new funeral director, Char Charlotte. Or Charlie, as she told me she likes to be referred to. Charlie is a recent graduate who came highly recommended and is eager to begin her career here with us at Rose and Daughter's Funeral Home. Please take the time to make Charlie feel at home within our little family. We'll have a nice catered lunch this afternoon so we can all get to know each other a little better as well. Sincerely, Amy Rose, Founder and Director, Rose and Daughter's Funeral Home. Instructions. Hello, Charlie. Well, you're new here, so it's better, probably best I explain where everything is. In your office slash preparation room, you'll find your crem cremation station, cremulator station, embalming station, and obviously, since you're reading this email, your desk and computer area. I know you have experience working with these stations, but please let me know if you have any questions. Best, Amy Rose, founder and director. From Gem Love to Charlie. Huh? I guess my subject line <laughs> to you should start being more professional now, then, now that we are business professionals. Professionals! I can't wait to get your reply so I can see your fancy new email signature. I love that you were able to land this gig straight after graduating. It sounds super cool. I didn't even know mom and pop funeral homes were a thing until now. Yes, it's not something I really think that much about. I should look more into this, learn more about your world and industry, because as I said, you are now a very serious professional. Speaking of being a professional, my museum gig is amazing. I can't believe someone paid me 
to move to London, and not London, Ontario, serial killer capital of Canada, to work in a museum. Like, take that, everyone who said I couldn't get a job with an art history degree. I'll tell you more about it when we Skype. Ew, Skype. My stories require you to see my face and that you hear my excellent British accent impersonation. Also, I signed you up for Funeral's monthly newsletter. Consider it your graduation gift, slash I love you, slash I am super proud of you gift. Love you, love you, love you. Jen L, Museum Curator, London Pathology Museum. You, you. From Amy Rose, today's tasks. Hello, Charlie. Hope you settled in okay so far. Matthew should have dropped off your first body for you to work on. He said you were really friendly, and he's glad to have someone young and lively to work with. He'll get used to a sense of humor. Oh, because, yeah, dead bodies. Uh-huh, got it. Mm-hmm. Your first body is Mrs. Garcia, an elderly woman who died suddenly of a heart attack. The family has asked for a closed casket funeral, so no embalming or body preparation is necessary. The family seems a little bit more united than previous families we've dealt with. Strange how grief affects people differently. Perhaps having more time to say goodbye makes things a bit easier, if that's possible. That being said, although you will not be embalming Miss Garcia, I do think it's important to take the time to clean her body. No one is going to see her body, but I like to encourage my funeral directors to do this out of respect for the deceased and their loved ones. You'll find Mrs. Garcia in the prep room. Talk soon. Ah, re special request for my mother's funeral. Dear Mia. Oh, maybe I should just start at the bottom. Dear Amy. We're happy to be with Rose and Daughters for my mother's funeral. We understand that these are usually procedures that must be followed in these situations, but if you could kindly not embalm my mother, that would be greatly appreciated. And we will proceed with a closed casket for the service. I just know she wouldn't have wanted her death to have any negative impact on the environment, and since she fought so hard to beat her heart disease and to live healthily, it would be a shame to have her final moments be counter to the way that she lived. Thank you for anything you can do to help us in this matter. Best, Mia. Dear Mia, of course we will be happily we will happily oblige your request for no embalming and a closed casket. I'll ensure our funeral director receives your request. Take care. Uh I will say that in a second. From Funerals Monthly. Thanks for subscribing. Each month we'll bring you a new newsletter featuring a topic pertaining to the death industry. This month is all about good etiquette for attending a funeral. I really can't believe we have to write this one out, but since we said we'd answer your most popular questions, here we are. Because this is definitely one of the most popular questions. Funerals are a hard time, and we understand that. But here are some quick and easy rules to remember for being respectful at a funeral. Generally, following the guidelines of don't be a jerk should work. 1. Don't be on your cell phone. We understand you're busy, but this is a time and place to disengage. This is a time and place to disengage. If you have to be on your cell phone, don't do so inside the funeral home. Don't be loud and obnoxious. You can share happy stories, but other people are also grieving and working through their own healing process. Being quiet gives other people space they might need. 3. Don't get drunk. Everyone can deal with their feelings in their own ways. Just remember to be respectful when the grieving family with when with the grieving family and friends. Or happily reminisce. Sometimes remembering happy moments and positive experiences with the, with the deceased can be a productive part of the healing process. 5. Give condolences. It's not easy knowing what to say to someone, but even a simple I'm thinking of you can go a long way. Yeah, that's true. Um, 6. Dress appropriately. What this looks like will change based on the customs of the deceased and their culture, but always dress in a way that shows respect to the deceased and the grieving family. 8. Give a gift or sign the registration book. This can be flowers or a nice card, but it's the thought that counts here. Sometimes this can be even just cooking dinner for the grieving family. Anything that shows you care and want to help them through the healing process is what matters here. Be kind and be helpful. That's good to like talk about for sure i know everyone grieves pretty differently um all right look at my coffee my coffee all right charlie oh, let's go over here so we're gonna clean the body 
Um, yeah, I have... This is the prep room where you will prepare bodies for burials and viewings. Yeah, I heard, um... People definitely talking about how embalming fluid can really, um... I don't remember if it's the fumes or runoff from it, but it can be pretty hazardous to the environment, because, you know, it's... Not good with, uh... <laughs> living matter. Because the family has requested a closed casket ceremony with no embalming, you're just going to clean the body. Click on the sponge, drag it over the body, and clean it. I think, like, when playing games like this, it's important to, like... I don't know, I feel like it's interesting to talk about, like... People's reaction to death. Just because that's what it's about. Um, that's it, you're done. Mrs. Garcia will be sent to Mike, who will take care of the dressing and putting her in the casket. It's time to go to Mrs. Garcia's funeral. You're responsible for taking care of the deceased body, but it's also important to pay your respects to the, to the loved ones. Follow the arrow to head to the funeral parlor. Oh, that's really cool. So... I tend to be someone who has, a like, I'm not really usually, um, affected by death. Um, yeah, I heard the family specifically said no embalming. I thought it was mandatory, like, required by law, but I guess not. Embalming weirds me out. Do those chemicals leach into the ground? It seems strange to be using a chemical that's known to cause cancer and putting it into the ground like that. Or into the sewer. That's what they must do with the leftover formaldehyde, right? Just pour it down the drain? At least embalming guarantees you won't be buried alive. <laughs> Stop it. Don't make me laugh right now. Okay. Just check in. Um, so yeah, I've had all of my grandparents die, um, at various stages of my life. Um, she would have handed these paintings. She was so particular. I wasn't really affected by it, but I also wasn't really close to my grandparents. Um, <laughs> the political dialogue. <laughs> Yeah, at least she doesn't have to see them, I guess. That's... <sighs> yeah, I guess. It's just interesting how people react. We usually don't small talk a lot of these things. At least that's what I was always taught. Well, it's still nice to check in on people. I hate wearing pantyhose. My legs are so itchy. But it's always so cold in these funeral homes. Ma'am, may I introduce you to the magic of sweater tights? Oh my god, I love sweater tights so much. They're so comfy. I think I might actually miss those sweaters she used to knit for me now. Oh yeah, I'm hungry. When can we go? Oof. I guess I can't eat the food because it's my food. <laughs> Air spots. I'll let them be. October 11th, 10.09am. Aw, oh, I'm cleaning the table. It's very cute. I like the style. It's it's nice. From Jennifer Valentine to Charlie. Okay, so let me explain this a bit in a bit more detail. Uh I am so frustrated right now. Sorry, I just you know. Can I rant for a second? I'm so tired of hearing strangers, colleagues, anyone, <clears throat> male colleagues, get over my case for wearing corsets. I wear them under my blazer and over a nice blouse 
so it's not like I'm dressing inappropriately, even though dress codes are such sexist BS. Anyways, I'm like, I hate how their misogyny gets veiled in faux concern. Jen, I'm just worried that you're damaging your body. You know what corsets do to livers, right? Corsets don't do anything to livers. They're definitely not hurting me as much as your condescension is hurting my head. Ugh, sorry, I'm out of sorts right now. I'll send you another email in a little bit when I've cooled off a bit. Okay, so let me explain this in a bit more detail. A colleague and I were discussing the tight lacer liver, tight lacer's liver specimen we have here at the museum. It's from a woman who died in 1907, and the liver is tampered inwards from where the doctor, from what the doctor leading the autopsy believed was too tight lacing on her corset. It's fascinating because it's kind of a controversial topic. Tight lacing was super popular, and while well, people associated with with fainting or hysteria. <sighs> oh, hysteria. My favorite disease. No, it was terrible. It was extremely misogynistic, but at least they prescribed vibrators for it. <laughs> uh, it's actually been associated with viscerotosis, visceroptosis, which is when the organs fall to the lower part of the abdomen, right? Which is super unsettling, but can be also caused by being pregnant, so... <laughs> Too long, didn't read. Of course, it's probably messed up some bones, yes, but likely didn't do this kind of internal organ damage. And I'm tired of the condescension about my wardrobe that also implies I don't know what I'm doing. These are the kind of things I specifically research, and yet I am treated like I know nothing about. I'm having a day, Charlie. Yeah, it's it's so funny. It's just like, ugh. This woman is having scare quotes issues i better give her a vibrator so she can fuck herself into feeling better <laughs> i'm like good like it was out of misogyny because they didn't understand how women worked and also women weren't doctors but like man i think this i think that Prescri prescription in particular needs to be brought back. Not for anything in particular, just like you go to the doctor and be like, can I get a vibrator? And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> oh, I have the funeral um, home website. That's cool. About Rosen Daughters. Rosen Daughter's funeral home was founded by my grandparents back in 1956. The Rose family has proudly served the area since then, providing personal, affordable funeral services for all. I'm proud to have carried on my family's business for the last 36 years, working with the best and brightest funeral directors and grief counselors in the area. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you've recently experienced a loss and would like us to help you through this hard time. Our services. Here at Rosen Daughter funer Daughter's Funeral Home, we're committed to providing loved ones with the best and most affordable funeral services in the area. We offer a diverse range of personalized funeral services to fit every need. Prices. Burial with open casket ceremony and receptions. $5,985. Burial with closed casket ceremony and reception. $4,275. Cremation with ceremony and reception. $1,700. Direct burial with no ceremony and or reception. 1905 all-inclusive. Direct cremation with no ceremony or reception, $600, all-inclusive. We also under offer custom packages to suit every budget and need. Please do not hesitate to contact us with questions at fake email. Yes, free prescription. Mm hmm yes. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be free too, that's important. And they have to be good vibrators. They can be okay vibrators if they're free, actually, but they should be good vibrators. <laughs> Ideally. From Funerals Monthly. What to wear when you're attending a funeral from a different culture? Oh, that's... You can't summarize this in one email. You do... Okay. Actually, I should kind of... Like say something about this like i know the um 
like burying loved ones is really really expensive especially these days um and it i mean it's nice to see a small funeral home like doing this and having a sliding scale budget um but it's also sad that the cheapest option is just cremation and i mean i know it's the least amount of work you just put the body in the furnace and then you don't even like maybe you could send the ashes back if they want them but you don't have to it's just kind of sad that like if people can't afford something more intimate or something that gives them more closure then they're just kind of screwed which is really really sad and i'm sure a lot of people are struggling with that like, all the time but it's good that they this funeral home is like trying to be good about that about that and i know like the more for-profit corporate ones are definitely not <laughs> Which sucks. Actually, my favorite... One of my favorite episodes of Leverage um, is where they investigate the funeral home that's been doing the um, identity theft scam. That one's great. That episode rules. I want to watch Leverage again. Just for like the fifth time. <laughs> okay, so what to wear at... Uh, uh, different culture funerals. People's accessibility culture shouldn't have a monetary block. It really shouldn't, and honestly, I'm not even, like, quali qualified. I'm not even in a position to be, like, saying this when people constantly are saying this all the time. But, you know, you gotta at least acknowledge it. I'm glad that your bestie loves leverage. It's just, like, one of the best TV shows I've ever watched in my life. It's so good. I love when people steal shit from people who deserve it. I love- I love me some Robin Hood narratives. We all know everyone wants to be respectful of funerals. Don't talk too loudly, be kind, and smile, and refrain from making inappropriate jokes. At least around the grieving family. family. Hey, sometimes some people do need a little bit of pick-me-up during such hard times. Who are we to judge? And a big part of that is knowing what to wear. Roman Catholic funerals tend to lean more to the formal black attire rule, and it works for us. Did you know this goes back to the days of the Roman Empire, where people would wear black as a symbol for mourning? Black isn't universally the symbol for mourning, though. And if you're attending a funeral that is from a culture that is not your own, it's important to understand this. Some colors have different meanings, and despite your best intentions, the wrong choice could mean an accidental offense. For example, in Hinduism and Chinese culture, cultures, China is not a monolith, um, white is a typical color for funerals. For Islam, though, it is less about the color you're wearing and more about how modestly you're dressed. Refrain from wearing any elaborate jewelry and be respectful of your behavior. For Sikh funerals, color of the clothing isn't as important, as is dressing modestly and being able to appropriately sit cross-legged. Actually, being respectful is just the number one rule for any funeral, no matter what, really. Remember that, and please don't hesitate to ask what is and isn't appropriate to wear. If you are attending to support a friend, family member, or partner, this day is not about you, so be sure to do whatever you can do to be as respectful and supportive as possible. Even if that means not wearing what you're used to wearing at a funeral. Or even if it just means asking how you can appropriately show your respects. From Matthew Jeffrey to Charlie. A story about death. Hey there, Charlie. I was driving around the other day, you know, taking our clients on their last trip around town. And I was thinking, strange, I know. I love this guy, he's great. <laughs> That's really nice to, like, drive people around town, even, like, just to- they're all so respectful. 
<laughs> the coffee cup looks like I work for a space company. It does. You're right, that does look like a spaceship or like a exploratory like thing. Star Trek funerals. No, I think I think this is explicitly set like modern day. Um it might be like a Starbucks reference. Fuck Starbucks. Um <laughs> But, uh, I don't know. I could see that, actually. Uh, yeah, it's really nice that he's being... If only we had Star Trek now. We have to wait for, uh... Fuck, what's his name? Um... The guy who invented the... We have to wait till Vulc Vulcan First Contact, obviously. <laughs> then we can have Star Trek now. <laughs> Hello, welcome! <laughs> I'm glad you also love Leverage. <laughs> I am a big Leverage fan, and I got reminded of the Funeral Home episode, which is very good. My favorite episode's always going to be the, um, the Dagger job, though, and the, uh, Shahrazad job. Two of my favorites. All-time episodes. Just, mwah, amazing. That was a stressful episode, but I loved when Elliot was, like, <laughs> he walked into the funeral, as, like, pretending to be the, um, <laughs> The criminal, and then it was a cop funeral. <laughs> oh, the tap out job is so good. Any any El Elliot episode is just great. I, I'm a big fan of that guy playing sports. Baseball episode, hockey episode, perfect, perfect. No notes, delicious. Elliot is the boy of all time. Okay, um, <laughs> did I ever tell you the first time I went to a funeral? I was a teenager about to start university, and a friend of mine was killed in a car accident, totally out of the blue. Really tragic stuff, messed me and my friends up real good. But so, the big day, uh, we all got into our best suits and dresses and packed ourselves into a few cars. There were a lot of us, so we had at least three different cars full of us, like, Clown cars, you know? While we're in the procession going to the cemetery, someone in our car got a phone call from a friend in a different car. Oh, I'm just reading the game. So, don't worry. <laughs> I'm reading out the email. <laughs> um, I think I was pretty young when I went to my first funeral, though. I don't remember it at all because I have a terrible memory, but it was probably my grandfather. It was a long time. I might have been seven, eight. Really long time ago. You're good. <laughs> um, Quinn is also great because um, the the episode where he's going around with uh, fuck, what's his for with Will Whedon's character. Uh, speaking of Star Trek, uh, <laughs> uh, and he's just like, can I, like, just throw him off the dam now, please? And Elliot's like, now you know what I deal with every day. <laughs> Thank you for following. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Chaos, yeah. Uh. Leverage, good show. I need to watch the new episodes. I haven't... I haven't watched uh, the new stuff since the Magic um, Castle uh, one, which was really, really good. New seasons are good. I like them. I like them a lot. Um, where was I? Oh, oh, while we were in the procession going to the ceremony, someone in our car got a phone call from a friend in a different car. 
Turns out, some asshat driver who doesn't know not to get in the way of a procession drove through the intersection and smashed straight into our friend's car. Nobody was hurt, thank god. But can you imagine getting that call? Anyways, one of my friends in the same car as me, the one who got the phone call, hung up and started laughing. Just laughing her ass off in a way that makes you not sure you're really crying or they've gone fully off the deep end. Um... You're not really that late. This is, like, very early on. Um... It does work. Um... So this is a mortician's tale. This is like a short, about one hour visual novel sim game about working in a funeral home. And uh, just like what you do and process and talking about death and it's nice. Yeah. Uh... Anyway, one of my friends in the same car as me, the one who got that phone call, hung up and started laughing. Just laughing her ass off in the way that makes you sure. Not sure if they're really just crying or they've gone fully off the deep end. And then she laughed and then we all started giggling because like, go figure, life is messed up sometimes, you know? There is no moral, no point to the story, I guess. I just remembered that story and wanted to tell you. Because we work with death all the time and I still sometimes get caught off guard by what that actually means. Oh, before you get any ideas, that has nothing to do with why I became a funeral director. That decision came totally later, and is nothing unremarkable. Somebody has to do it, and I have a strong stomach, so why not? I'm glad you can watch you. Or watch me. You can watch you, too. Watch the dogs. <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah, that's nice. I'll see you in a bit, Charlie. Matthew J. From Mia Garcia. Garcia. Sincerely, thank you. Hi, Amy. Please pass along our deepest thanks to you and your staff for the wonderful job they did with their mother's funeral. It was really wonderful. It was really lovely. Our family so rarely gets together. It was nice seeing everyone come out for such a beautiful service. My son never gets to see his family. Also, it was incredibly kind of you to let us bring our own food in. The dogs can tune in too. <laughs> I think they're going to be a little busy for that. <laughs> <laughs> Getting to share home-cooked meals, sharing stories, being there together, it was... It meant a lot. So, what I'm saying is, it was nice for everyone there to be there like that, together in that way. And I know how much of that was due to the work of your staff, but... Uh, especially your funeral director. Thank you for making this difficult time easier for all of us. Best, Mia. That does sound really nice, getting to bring your own food in. Just passing this message along. Thanks for the hard work, Charlie. Next job. Hi, Charlie. Here are the instructions for your next body. You did a remarkable job on the first one. The family was very happy with you. No small feat, of course. Uh, pleasing a grieving family isn't exactly the most comfortable of jobs. <laughs> Uh, throwing the ball constantly for the dogs. Uh, yes, priorities. I understand. And a ball. <laughs> um. Your next job is a man named Mr. Duval. An elderly man. Died of old age. Nothing fancy, just a standard funeral with embalming. You can reach out to his daughter, Lizzie Duval, if you have any questions. She's handling her father's passing as well as, as can be expected. As anyway, as always, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. Best, Amy Rose, founder and director, Rose and Daughters Funeral Home. P.S. Charlie, dear, please remember to wear pop proper embalming gear. Formaldehyde is extremely dangerous. I know I don't need to tell you, but my maternal instincts are hard to ignore. I promise I won't mother you too much. Well, just a little. Ask Matthew, he knows. Okay. I'll get right on it. Formaldehyde? Um, I think it can... It can, like, really dry out your skin in direct contact, if I remember correctly. Um... 
like really really badly um it's not good to touch uh it's an alcohol so it does have fumes i believe it's an alcohol pretty sure it's an alcohol um so you have to be careful with that as well which is why she's wearing a mask Traditional burials typically require embalming, which preserves the body and prevents it from decomposing as quickly. Unless the family requests otherwise, all traditional burials will use embalming. Let's start by cleaning the body. Oh boy. You got a little dirty there, mister. Is that hair? Are we gonna shave him? That sounds like a nice thing to do. Click on the razor and drag it over the body to shave it. Hopefully I don't cut him accidentally. <laughs> that would be awkward. In order to break rigor mortis, you'll have to massage the body. Click and drag over the body to massage it. Oh, that's... That's nice. The eyeballs deflate once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag an eye cap into each socket to give it shape. Yeah. There we go. Keep the eyes shut, you'll need to glue them. Yeah, he won't bleed if you cut him because you do drain the blood. Um, I believe. Uh, or we might not have done that yet. We might have to do that soon. We might have to drain the blood soon. To keep the eyes shut, you'll need to glue them. Click and drag the glue onto each eye to shut it. The mouth sags and hollows once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag a cotton ball into the mouth to give it shape. To keep the mouth from opening, you'll need to secure it shut. Click and dra drag the needle and thread over the jaw to close it. A lot of work goes into this. Click and drag the lotion over the body to moisturize it. This prevents the skin from drying out. Wouldn't want that. That sounds... rough. Embalming involves removing blood and replacing it with preserving chemicals. Yeah, I didn't know that about the eye th thing either, but that makes sense uh, if you consider, like, fish eyes do that too. That's just like the general, like most animal eyes do that, I guess. Like when you see them in the grocery store, though, you don't really generally see a pig's head in the grocery store. But like sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But generally, fish is what you see most often. Click and drag the scalpel over the neck to make an incision. You're going to need a tube for draining blood. Click on the tube and drag it into the neck incision. Click on the cannula and drag it in onto the carotid artery. This is how you'll get preserving chemicals into the bloodstream. Now you'll need to connect the embalming machine to the cannula. Grab some additional tubing and drag it to the cannula. There we go. Sorry for all the squatchy noises <laughs> by accident. Click the button on the embalming machine to turn it on. In order to evenly distribute the chemicals, you'll have to massage them through the body. Click and drag over the body to massage it. Yeah, it's, it's a rough squish, isn't it? I guess this also helps the blood come out. You can see it draining as the embalming fluid goes in. People have a lot of blood in them. Great, now let's sew up the incision. Click and drag the needle and thread over the incision to close it. Almost done. You'll need to drain the organs of any remaining fluids. Click on the trocar, and then click and hold on the abdomen until all the liquid has been drained. I'm 
Gotta get all that stomach acid out. Of I have to wait for them to disappear. Whoops. And you're done. Mike will take care of Mr. Duvall's makeup, as well as dressing and putting him into his casket. It's time to attend the funeral. Right. Came out of nowhere. I mean, it always sort of does, doesn't it? Yeah. One minute you're laughing, having fun, and then the next. Oof. That person is gone. Just like, gone. I wonder if this game will have a younger person show up as one of the bodies. Uh, we talked about how there's less blood in the body than we thought, but it's still a lot of blood. I think it's like less than a gallon, if I remember. It's a couple of liters. Yeah, it's weird to think about it for too long. Like, staring at the sun. I start to feel a little fuzzy when I think about it. Mm-hmm. So weird how our bodies just stop working like that. Yeah. Yeah. So strange not seeing most people wearing white. White? Yeah, I think it's different for different family members. I can't remember having gone to many traditional funerals. So, mostly white, but, like, definitely not red, no matter what. That sucks for vampires. <laughs> oh my god, I can't wait to play a vampire game on this channel. I should, um... I should look into Swan Song for Halloween. Because I know that uh, Bloodlines 2 is not going to be out for like another year. Hopefully. Um, I don't know. I don't know how video game timelines work. They're always shorter than I think they're supposed to be. <clears throat> How's this kid doing? Are you coping? Coming to himself. Mm hmm. Playing his game. Bloodlines is so good. I'm excited for the sequel, but, you know, who knows what's gonna happen in it. Because <laughs> the original game is not, like... Honestly, if Bloodlines 2 gets stuck in development hell like the first one... <laughs> the kid doesn't care, he's here for the Switch. I was that kid, honestly. <laughs> um... It's bad, but beloved. Yeah, I'm one of the person. I'm one of the people who really loves it. Um, but you know, for a game made in the early 2000s that was stuck in development hell and is also kind of unplayable, uh, without being patched, um, by fans, it's like, it's good. I like the story. I it was a product of its time for sure. <clears throat> but I I like I like uh, Vampire the Masquerade as a setting quite a lot. Um, so I'm excited for Bloodlines too. Also, I love that they put a bottle of estrogen in your apartment when you start the game, and I was always like, as a kid, uh, when I was watching this on YouTube, I wasn't a kid; I was a teenager. But like, um. I'd always see people pick up the bottle of estrogen in the room in the game. And I said, do not take if you are male. And I was like, huh, wonder what that does. And it just changes you into a woman. It's great. Fucking rules. Shout out to games that do that. <laughs> Shout out to the Dark Souls gender coffin. <laughs> Ah, uh, he always wanted to take his grandkids to the park, play catch. He loved playing catch. He threw a mean curveball, that's for sure. Uh, 
I'm gonna close the casket now. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just saying hi. I can't do that. That's their job. Trans vampires? Hell yes. 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 A hundred times yes. We need more trans vampires in the world. Start your immortal life by choosing your gender. Exactly! I don't really know how that- like, obviously it's like, you know, an oversimplification for how HRT works, right? But like, also, if you make a mistake, you can just fix it. It's perfect. I don't think there's like testosterone if you play as a woman though, so it's like definitely one-sided. <laughs> Hello, Charlie. Today's funeral is from a, for a woman who died from breast cancer. Nothing fancy, just a standard cremation. Please don't hesitate to ask me if you have any questions. Oh! Hey! Here's something I know what to talk about! If you've... LGBTQ funerals. Respect. If you've been a longtime subscriber to our emails or follow us on social media, you've no doubt heard about misgendering that transgender people... The misgendering that transgender people are, at times, subjected to during the funerals. There have been notable situations where trans women have had their wishes overruled by their families and have had their hair cut, are buried under the wrong names, and subjected to the wrong pronouns in their obituary announcements. Yeah, it's something I have absolutely thought about, and I don't think... <sighs> I have a family who would- I would be afraid that this would happen to me. So, I've thought about this. And... I think I'm always going to think about it. Um... Yeah. It's rough. It's really scary. Um... It's a reason why... a lot of people say deaths are underreported. Yeah, the people who made this game are great. This game is great. We care a lot, a lot about this because we believe in treating every person with the same amount, same level of compassion, respect, and care. And this absolutely extends to pronouns and respecting the deceased wishes as part of their lived experiences. Oh, you'll fight them? Thank you. Thank you for fighting for me. I really living up to the princess thing, huh? <laughs> Take up swords in my name. Um. <laughs> the CDC's Funeral Director Handbook on Death Registration and Fetal Death Reporting often offers the fraught directive. Enter male or female based on observation. Bad. Well, sometimes. But, you know. Like... Based on observation is not a good line of thought. If you don't know... I don't know... Do not abbreviate or use other symbols. If sex cannot be determined after verification with medical records, inspection of the body, or other sources, enter unknown. Do not leave this item blank. Hmm. Leaving it up to observation, obviously. Uh, enters into a world of issues, since bodies can be so different, and because of ingrained bias, people can draw incorrect assumptions based on their own accurate observations. California has passed what is known as the Respect After Death Act, which states that the death certificate must reflect this deceased gender identity as they lived it. So, a step in the right direction. Yeah, well, you know, CDC, known for their extreme, uh... <laughs> devotion to being as accurate as possible these days, so... <laughs> Ouch. Love to live in a country, truly. That's good to know that California has that. Um, I wonder how many other states have that now. People who are trans deserve the same respect in death that people who are cisgender receive. Yes. Misgendering and death takes away this respect. It can also inflict hurt and trauma on spouses and friends that survive the disease. Very, very, very true. So what can we do as funeral directors? 
listen to the people who come into your office. In America especially, some marriages may not be recommend recognized as legal, depending on the laws around same-sex marriage. But this doesn't mean you're not dealing with two people who have loved each other in the same way as another couple. Listen, learn, but always be respectful. While you have to work with the next of kin, your duty is also to ensure the deceased receives the utmost respect in, your bur in their burial. If a funeral is to honor the deceased, then do that. Honor them. Yes, 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 yes. Good, good game. Good game. Uh-oh. Paycheck coming late. Sorry. Here it is. <sighs> hey, Matthew. This is embarrassing, but it seems I miscalculated some of our income, and I don't have enough to pay you this week. Would it be terribly inconvenient if I got you a check for next week instead? If you need the money urgently, please let me know. I feel terrible about this whole thing, and I can cut you a check from my personal account if need be. I'm so, so sorry about this. I assure you it won't happen again. Oh. I don't like the look of this. Not one bit. I know you've only been with us for a few months, but maybe you're aware of the trouble Amy has been having. A small mom and pop shop like Bros and Daughters can't compete with the bigger guys. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of wondered if this was coming. Anyway, don't tell Amy I sent this to you. Also, I'm starving, so I'm going to grab some fast food before taking the hearse through the car wash. Two birds, one stone, and I'm swinging back to the home. You want anything? Beef and cheddar? I'm gonna take the hearse up through the through the drive-thru, of course. It freaks people out. I love it. They get so awkward. Oh my god. <laughs> you pick up two orders, and they're like, Did he just order food for the dead body? <laughs> Oh, that sounds like so much fun. Oh my god. <laughs> Let me know. Heading out in 15 minutes. Yeah, I kind of was wondering if they would be having issues with money. Just because it sucks. The smaller places, like, know that they can be more inclusive, uh, more, like, they can help people who don't have enough money, and they're not trying to fucking take you for all your worth, and then they don't make enough money from it, which is awful. And this happens everywhere, right? With everything. Matthew living his best chaotic life, I want to do that. <laughs> he really is. What a guy. Meet cutes for death caught positive cuties. Charlie, I was doing some reading. I know you hate when I try and give you dating advice, but hear me out. There's a, this dating site that's specifically for people working in the death industry. Okay, so maybe I'm a little worried for you. You haven't mentioned anybody since new since the breakup of 2014 that will, will never speak again after this moment. But you're always saying how tired you get of people being scared to ask about your day, so maybe meeting somebody in the industry isn't the worst idea? Just promise me when you'll consider it, okay? It's harder for me to make sure you're seeing sunlight when I'm all the way across the ocean. I know you look like a babe with pale skin and witchy gothy aesthetic aesthetics are super hot right now, but vitamin D is still a good thing. Okay, but witchy gothy aesthetics are the best. I love them. I love witches. <laughs> Show me the gay witches. Mom ran, Mom ran over. I'm going to try it out because it turns out people get super scared off when you tell them you work in a museum filled with dead bodies. Do you know how not interesting other people find teratomas? Charlie, I didn't know we were this weird to outside people. I've been spoiled by having a best friend who's as much of a weirdo as I am. Miss you. Let's grab a bottle of wine for our next Skype date. P.S. If you sign up for Dead Meat... Oh my god, that, isn't that the just the best name for a death industry dating website? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Tinder rules apply. You have to like me if you come across my profile or whatever. I'm just not sure how it works yet, though. Gay witches! We love gay witches here. Thank you. From Lizzie Duvall. Hi, Amy. Thank you for the wonderful evening you and your staff put together for my father's funeral. 
He wasn't always an easy man to get along with, but I'm glad to have seen him off in such a kind way. Thank you, Lizzie. Passing on this lovely thank you note. Okay, here we go. Cremation. Let's do it. Let's cremate the body. Well, that's interesting that they'll do it in a casket here. That's very interesting. Before we cremate Mrs. Hall, we'll need to prepare a body. Uh, we should probably give that necklace back to her family. Oh! Oh. <laughs> Mrs. Hall's family brought clothing and jewelry for her to wear. It's important to remove these before the cremation process as to not damage them. Let's start by removing Mrs. Hall from this necklace. Click and drag the necklace. Place it on the purple tray. We will place the necklace in the urn with Mrs. Hall's remains for later. Oh, I see. We need to be able to identify Mrs. Hall's remains after she's been cremated. Click and drag the round identification tag and place it in the coffin. Great! Mrs. Hall is all set to be cremated now. Alright. I feel like being cutesy about putting someone in a cremator is like... A weird thing to do. So I'm not going to. <laughs> this is a cremator. Contrary to popular belief, cremation doesn't turn bodies into ash so much as bone fragments. Using the cremulator, we'll break these bone fragments down into ash-like remains. Let's start by placing the urn in the cremulator. Oh, well, that's cool. I didn't know that, actually. Oh my god, wait. No, I, I should be respectful. I shouldn't swing around people's bones like a... a with fucking... physics objects. Oh my god. I want bones in my ashes, that's awesome. So, it's, it's just bones, it's not ashes. Like, maybe there's some ashes from the body itself, but I think it's just, like, high enough that it just destroys everything that isn't bone. I think that's what they meant. <clears throat> now that all the bones have been processed, click and drag the urn back onto the counter. Make sure to put Mrs. Hall's necklace back into the urn. Click on the necklace and drag it into the urn. Don't forget the tag. Click on the round identification tag and drag it to the urn. Last step. Click on the urn's lid and drag it on top of the urn. All done. Amy will take the urn to the funeral parlor and present it alongside some flowers. Low fire, get ashes, skulls, lid. Oh my god, that's very aesthetic. I know that cremation can also have some environmental issues just from smoke. Um, everyone can pick up the urn to rehearse Hamlet. <laughs> this is a very interesting idea. I'm sure people have done it. Um, just keep the skull and everything else gets turned to the ash. That's that's fun. I like new new things come out like every year and it's all like stuff based on cremation. Um which again isn't necessarily the most environmentally friendly thing. Uh but there's you know, there's some stuff that like you become fertilizer for a tree. There's uh, there's one where they'll turn you into a diamond, which uh, is probably really expensive. There's one guy who specifically was like, "When I die, my skull must be used for Hamlet." Good, good. This is this is the theater nerds uh, version of uh, donating their body to science. <laughs> this is nice in a weird way. She'd like that we're all here together talking. She always tried to keep the family together. The food is delicious. I know that's weird, but these crab cakes are perfect. Glad she was cremated and not in, like, an open casket or something. Seeing her like that, I don't... I don't know if I could have. It was Tchaikovsky? Oh my god. I love Tchaikovsky so much. Just my favorite composer. <laughs> Wait, um, how do I be your? 
You gotta, like, be really, really close. I don't... Tchaikovsky is great. He rules. He's the best. Shout out to everyone's favorite uh, fairy tale loving gay composer. Just. We, he's so good. He's so good. He's my favorite. Absolutely. And yeah, I can understand this. I can understand people who don't think that they could see the actual body and are mostly okay with the urn. At least we all got to say goodbye. She would have liked that. She fought really hard. She was proud of herself. She never gave up. Not once. She would have hated this music. She never wanted her funeral to be sad. She would have wanted us smiling. She said so. Respects. Yeah, he he does. Oh, it's Valentine's Day. Oh, it's Valentine's Day. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tchaikovsky, great. Just great. I, yeah. He had a rough life though. <laughs> that's for sure. Ooh. Ah, here it is. News about the future of Rose and Daughter's funeral home. Hi all. It's with a heavy heart, very heavy heart, that I write to let you know that Rose and Daughters will no longer be in business. I had no idea how to start this email. But resources I Googled told me it would be the best and easiest way to break the ice. Be direct, but remorseful, Google said. The truth is, I don't really know what to say. Since my father passed away, I've done my best to make Rose and Daughters warm and friendly to anyone who chose to use our services. It was my memorial to him, the original Rose, in a lot of ways. Oh, That's sweet. And you've all become Flake family, including you, Charlie, our most recent addition. But it's been getting harder and harder to make ends meet. Rent is going up in the neighborhood, and I'm finding less and less like I have the energy for this business. There's a lot of competition from other funeral homes, larger corporations that we than we are that can take on more business and offer more impressive services. You know the way it goes. Now, oh, upsold coffins. So we've been bought. Or I sold. Either way, soon Hillside Heritage Enterprises Inc a company that owns many funeral homes in the city and across the country will, will replace Rose and Daughters starting from the beginning of next month. Same building, same name. They're keeping the name Rose and Daughters Funeral Home for tax purposes. Though, honestly, I'm trying hard not to see it as a move on their part to keep up the image that it's a family-run business. I don't know how I feel about that, but I also don't know if there's anything I can do at this point either. I've signed the papers. At least my father's legacy is still intact, somewhat. They have a good reputation and have agreed to keep you all on. That was one of my stipulations. I would sell so long as you you all weren't without a job. It's very sweet of you. I just hope they're okay. Sorry if I didn't tell you in a more personal way. I would have left a company lunch, but I admittedly didn't have the heart to tell you in person. This was easier for me. Please understand. I understand. Forward. Thank you so much. Charlie, I thought you'd like to see this thank you now. Hi, Amy. I'm so eternally grateful that you were able to accommodate a request for my sister's funeral. It was a beautiful service, and she would have been happy with it. That's such a weird thing to say, isn't it? Thank you again, from the bottom of my heart. Sincerely, Margareta. Hmm... Um look at this. Tales from the Crypts. Let's left click dig, right click flag. Oh, it's Minesweeper! Uh oh, I'm gonna get lost in Minesweeper for 20 minutes. What? Hmm. 
Is it not Minesweeper? Oh, okay. It is Minesweeper. I just don't understand it. <laughs> Great. No! Okay. I don't know what these symbols mean. They're not very helpful compared to, like, numbers. <laughs> Whoa! Okay. So this is one. This must be two? I guess? Uh... Okay. Great. I'm, I shouldn't play Minesweeper for forever. <laughs> as much as I, like, get obsessed with it. Um... I should not do that. <laughs> Keep on protecting Earth with green burials. You've lived your life mindful of the environment, so doing your part to reduce pollution and generally help out where you can. So why not continue to do that even in death? At least that's the thinking for a lot of people who are turning to green and natural burials. Natural cemeteries are becoming more popular and are focused on a few rules. Mainly, it's that bodies aren't allowed to be embalmed with chemicals that can damage the environment, and bodies must be buried in a biodegradable shroud or casket. Not only is this better for the environment, it's also cheaper. At Union Cemetery in Ontario, Canada, a natural burial is just over $1,000. Oh, that's really cheap! So, better for the people, the environment, just maybe not so good for big business. Let's not forget, people, this is still a business after all. It shouldn't be. Um, but really, why go green? Green burials help preserve natural, natural resources, work to reduce carbon emissions, protect the health of those preparing bodies, and restore slash preserve national, natural habitats. Embalming fluids tend to contain formaldehyde, and funeral directors report a higher incidence of leukemia, Going green and not using toxic chemicals for embalming helps protect funeral directors while at the same time lessening the impact we have on the environment after we're gone. We think here at Funerals Monthly think green burials are pretty cool. What do you think? Reply and let us know. <clears throat> Charlie, I've been playing a new game when things are slow at work. It's called Tales from the Crypt Sweeper. Get it? Get it? It's like Minesweeper, but way harder. Like, seriously, it's really, really difficult. I found my Minesweeper game was on point after working that overnight front desk job at the hotel for three years. Oof. Yikes. That sounds miserable. But I must have gotten rusty. Anyway, instead of mines, you want to avoid graves so you don't disturb the adorable ghosts. Main character also kind of looks like you. Want to start a healthy competition? High score gets to pick the restaurant we go to when one of us is in town next. Jen is great. <sighs> From Ryan Garcia to Amy Rose. Hi Amy, I know this email might be a bit, a bit odd, but you said if I was ever having troubles I should reach out. And you know, you would know somebody I could talk to about all of this. I just, I don't know what to do now. I know my grandmother had lived a good good life. I was very happy and she's not in any pain now, but I still I feel empty, Amy. I've never felt this empty before. What am I supposed to do now? I thought I was stronger than this. Can you refer me to somebody to talk to? I don't want to freak out my mom right now. She's dealing with enough with work and the will and trying to just be the best mom she can. I just need someone to tell me it'll be okay. Thank you, and I'm sorry for being an inconvenience, Ryan. To Charlie, I thought I would forward this to you. In situations like this, we typically connect people like Ryan with a grief counselor, or other professionals who can really help him. Sometimes we get emails like this when people don't know where else to turn. It's difficult, and family isn't always the m most reliable for some people. <clears throat> Usually I would be happy to connect him, but I'm feeling a little tired today. 
not my usual self. It would be good for you to start building these kinds of relationships on your own. You're a treasure, Charlie. Oh. From Mariana Reyes. Hi, Amy. You asked if there are any special instructions we wanted to pass along. Just please cremate my father. He has a pacemaker too. The doctor told me that that would need to be removed. Thanks, Mariana. Hi, Charlie. Please see the note below about the pacemaker. That can be tricky. Sounds good. I'll take care of it. Mr. Reyes came directly from the hospital, so we won't have to worry about removing any valuables from him, as the family did not provide any for us to include. However, Mr. Reyes has a pacemaker that we'll need to remove before cremation. Because pacemakers are batteries, they will explode inside the hot heat of the cremation machine, and we definitely don't want that. Yeah, those things cost a lot, you don't want to have to fix it. Or buy a new one. Let's start by removing Mr. Reyes' pacemaker. Click and drag the scalpel over the heart to make an incision. You can see the pacemaker. Click on the forceps to click and drag the pacemaker out of his heart. Can it be a little lower? Or is that where they put them? Put the forceps away, then place the round identification tag in the coffin. Pink. Alright, have fun. <clears throat> yeah, it makes sense. But they would explode in an oven. <laughs> Mr. Reyes is all set to be cremated now. Using the chromulator, we'll break these bone fragments down into ash-like remains. Burn. Bones in. Ah. Uh, there we go. Well done. Amy will take the urn to the funeral parlor and present it alongside some flowers. Oh wow, there's lots of people here today. <clears throat> Did you ever end up clearing the air with your father? No, we talked a few times, but no, not really. He sounded like a difficult man. Stubborn. That's just it. Stubborn. Aww. What do you want to do after this? It's pretty nice out. Let's change and go find a patio somewhere? Sounds good. I could really use a beer right now. Hey, did I ever tell you about the time we tailgated? I wonder if her dad was... I wonder if they're implying that they're dating. And her dad was a little homophobic. I always told him to quit smoking, but of course he never listened to me, so that figures. Hmm. I wonder if he ever liked me. He was nice to me, but I don't know. He never really seemed like he cared if I was there or not. Oh. Well... Even then, you still have to grieve. However that goes. I kind of feel like they're together. February 28th, 10.35 a.m. Gotta wash your hands. <clears throat> the person in the corner just staring into the distance. Uh... From Mariana Reyes to Amy Rose, thank you. Hi Amy, I just wanted to thank you for the service the other month, and apologize if I was abrupt. 
It was kind of a shock to me, and I didn't feel comfortable with the whole process. Abe wasn't supposed to die yet. It hasn't been easy. But I passed this along to you. Things to avoid saying at a funeral. Welcome back! Now, we rarely do listicles here, but for this month's newsletter, we thought a listicle would be the best way to deliver this month's advice. What to not say at a funeral? I hate the word listicle. It's gross. It just sounds gross. It, I don't like it. <laughs> we know figuring out the right thing to say to a grieving friend can be extremely difficult, but since that's such a personal issue, it's hard to give such specific advice. Some things will be more comforting to other people, but fortunately, we can deliver a little bit more solid advice on what not to say to someone who's grieving. So here it is, Funeral Monthly's top five things to not say at a funeral. Well, this is gonna go over well. At least they're no longer suffering. Even if this is true, nobody wants to hear this, slash, it's not probably your, not your place to dictate. Who wants to be told that the death of somebody they love is for the best? Like, like I said, even if it's true, don't be that jerk and don't say it. Were they saved? <laughs> no religious statements. Just don't. Why? Because not everyone agrees with your religious views, and not only is it not always comforting, it can also be insulting. They're with the angels now. See above's note, then rinse, repeat. Let me know how I can help. This one is tricky. You want to help, but those in mourning won't always ask for help. You, if you want to help, suggest specific things. For example, I'm free if you need someone to babysit the kids. Actions are better than passive statements. Cook something for them. Take them to their favorite restaurant or buy tickets to see a movie together. That's really good advice. I know how you feel. Even if you think you do, Everybody grieves differently. Don't focus this on yourself. Empathy doesn't involve having to commiserate. Sometimes people will want to hear your experiences, but don't assume they will. Ask first. For a quicker version of this list that can be applied in any situation, don't say stuff just for the sake of saying stuff. Just say I'm sorry if you don't know what else to say. <clears throat> I wanted to see if they increased... Um... But I wanted to see if the website changed, and also if the prices went up because they got bought out. But it looks like not yet. From Gen Love, mushrooms. This is how I talk about mushrooms, so the, yeah, it makes sense. You hate mushrooms so much, I found the perfect thing for you. I've been thinking about death. I know, shocker, look what you've done to me. I think I want this mushroom suit. No, it's not called that, but I can't remember the name of it, so I'm writing you on my phone so I don't feel like googling it right now. Anyway, the idea is it's a biodegradable suit that the deceased wears. It's made with what people call a biomix, i.e. mushrooms, other microorganisms that help to decompose bodies, neutralize toxins in the body, and provide nutrients for the soil and the plants. I think this one company even offers casket liners for use in green caskets. I think this is what I want. It'll just be like- it'll be just like Hannibal. Wait. Don't tell people I said that, okay? But <laughs> that one episode of Hannibal, like, they literally said it! <laughs> Don't tell people I said that, okay? But seriously, it's pretty cool. I love all the death innovation happening. We might as well do something when we're in the ground, you know? I agree. Love you. Think about it, and let me know your thoughts. I want all of your thoughts. If it's not this, then maybe I'll have my ashes made into jewelry. But seriously, I'm probably gonna do this. There's no harm in planning ahead, am I right? <laughs> Thanks, Jen. You're a great friend. <clears throat> Forward, our son. Charlie, I was hoping you wouldn't have to confront the situation yet, anyway. They're never easy. Rose and daughters have been asked to prepare the body of a young man who took his own life. He had a will prepared and asked for cremation. The family has demanded a traditional burial instead. Oh. Fuck. Families. You wonder if human mushrooms are actually better? Is that creepy? Um. If they taste better? I don't know. Uh, a lot of mushrooms that I do specifically know about, like, a lot of mushrooms people eat generally grow on wood, so I'm not actually sure. 
obviously like you probably wouldn't find a lot of mushrooms on decomposing bodies just because they're so um <clears throat> I feel like they're much more temporary than a tree would necessarily be. They might be shorter lived mushrooms. They probably don't grow that big. Um, it's interesting. I don't know how edible it would be. Ooh, that's kind of rough. The person that the mushrooms were growing on were alive? <laughs> That's... Oh, Last of Us. Yeah, that... So the, the zombie fungus that The Last of Us is based on is, like, one of the number one things that freaks me the fuck out. Like, I'll... Every time I see a picture of those ants, I just... It grosses me out so bad. I It's so creepy. Yeah. I'm not a zombie person in the first place, but The Last of Us is definitely my least favorite kind. Um, I'm a dead space girl. I am, uh, these walking corpses have been mutated by an alien virus, so they look like just hideous body horror monsters. That's, that's, those are my zombies. <laughs> um... I love Dead Space. I'm excited for more coming out, more games doing that. I need to play Prey so bad. I need to do it. At some point, I'm going to go through all of the arcane games. But, oh, yes, I need to play Prey. I wish I could play the old Prey, too, but apparently it's just nowhere now because, you know, games. Uh, and games preservation. Because the old price sounds like actually really good and like really progressive. Yeah, Dishonored is amazing. I am a big Dishonored fan. I like honestly, I want to go through all the arcane games, go through the whole Dishonored. Like, I know it's not really a trilogy, but like sort of a trilogy. I don't know. Death of the Outsider is a shorter game, right? So. Um, and just, like, do it slowly, and Deathloop, and pray, and I just want to, like, enjoy these spaces. Yeah. And talk about them. I love talking about Dishonored. <laughs> so, he wants a cremation, and the family wants a traditional burial. Unfortunately, he didn't make anyone his power of attorney or didn't have any witnesses sign his living will or advance directive regarding these wishes. So, his family is legally in the right to do whatever they want with his body. It's unfortunate, but we have to do as his family wishes. Matthew has graciously offered to take this on if you are uncomfortable with the subject. Instead, we have a second body you can prepare for a funeral we're hosting later in the afternoon. Charlie, is this suicide something you're comfortable dealing with? Let me know if it- No, I'm here if you need me. Arson. From Manuel Scott to Amy Rose. Good day, Miss Rose. Disregard our son's will, as it concerns matters of his burial. He was clearly not thinking right and didn't know what he really wanted. Proceed with an open casket funeral. As for payment, we'll bring a check. Fuck some parents. Honestly, just- I'm comfortable with the suicide part. I'm not comfortable with the parents, like, just overruling his autonomy. Autonomy and death is so important. Like, we talked about earlier with, like, being able to die as yourself if you're trans. This feels like that to me. I, I can't... I'm fine with doing it, but it's just like... It sucks. I'm sorry. Sorry, buddy. I'm sorry your parents are shitty. The deceased family has asked for an open casket funeral. Let's start by cleaning the body.
You don't deserve this. You deserve what you wanted. I wish I could, you know, just cremate you like you wanted, but... <sighs> you gotta pay bills. Having it to be open casket does sound worse for them, but, like, it definitely seems like they're being extremely controlling. And they want, like, what they say is right. Because <clears throat> they're like, oh, this our child, we, we know what's best. And it's like, okay, but, like, I think he committed suicide for a reason, you know? That might have been because of you. Oh, that's the wrong one. This one. You know, ethics are important. And ethics and death sounds like one of the more important things, but again, if they they have the legal stuff, then we can't do what's in their will, unfortunately. Like, I, I just have ethical issues with what they've decided for this. Well, he did have a will. The problem was he didn't give someone else power of attorney, so his parents could override that. Well done. Mike will take care of Mr. Scott's makeup, as well as dressing and putting him in his casket. Yeah, that's what's kind of rough. More than anything. <clears throat> I assume this is the guy who emailed us. <sighs> Quiet sobs. I wish we were closer. Oh, I still can't believe this is real. It would be interesting if you could cremate him anyway. I think we would get sued, and that would be really bad. Um, unfortunately. Because it might mean that the sale could get cancelled, and then we'd just be dead in the water. So... I understand the decision. It's just rough. Yeah, I agree. I wish we were closer. Wow, I still can't believe this is real. My baby brother. I should have played more games with him when he asked. I... Hmm. I get it. It's hard in this case. I heard it wasn't going to be open casket. I'm surprised it's public. Usually funerals for these circumstances are more private. Yeah, well... Someone has a shitty pot, shitty dad. I almost said pad. I still can't believe he did it. I feel like I should have known, you know? Been able to do something to stop it. There was no way to know. You can't blame yourself. You wouldn't have wanted that. I know, I know. It's just... It hurts. Yeah, yeah, I know. Cases like this are really hard. Because everyone feels like they could have done something, and... I know that in a lot of cases, there's... People don't talk about it. Because they don't want to worry people. March 3rd, and 45. Here we go! Time to check the prices. From Chad Grant to Rosen Daughterstaff. 
We are pleased to bring on Rose and Daughters as part of Hailstide Heritage Enterprises, Inc. They will be another institution among hundreds of other properties owned across the country. Gross. But of course, as part of the adjustment process in the Hillside Heritage Enterprises and Culture, there will be a number of changes that will come to Rosen Daughters. We will send out the memo regarding the specifics and details of these changes, and we expect them to be followed impeccably. Glad to be leading the right way for Rosen Daughters from now on. Chad Grant, CEO and Managing Funeral Director, Hillside Heritage Enterprises Inc., Rosen Daughters Division. All right, time to check the prices. Rosen Daughters, operated by Hillside Heritage Enterprises Inc. Hillside Heritage. Oh, they got rid of all of the. Ugh. Rosen Daughters is the newest funeral home to join Hillside Heritage, proudly serving 56 different communities nationwide since 1964. Rosen Daughters features several available packages for burials and cremations, a spacious visitation suite for added comfort, and catering are available on site. Rely on our dedicated and friendly staff to help you with your funeral needs, whether you need our immediate assistance for your loved one or would like to pre-plan your own final arrangements. We offer many packages to suit every size and gathering and budget. Ask about us ask us about our selection of caskets, urns, and headstones. The largest in the country. Aww. Funeral packages. Oh boy, here we go. This is rough. Bronze Funeral Package. An intimate gathering and memorial for your loved one. Customized to fit your individual needs. Best suited for groups of 25 to 50. Silver Funeral Package. Small but special celebration for your loved one. Best suited for groups of 50 to 100. Gold Funeral Package. Give your loved one the best with the best we have to offer. A large gathering to celebrate your loved one. Best suited for groups over 100. One asterisk, subject to additional fees and taxes. Two asterisks, payment plans available. Call us 24-7 for a quote. 1-800-555-5555. Oh, it's so soulless now. This is... awful. And gross, and they definitely do not serve people who don't have money. Oh. From Matthew Jeffrey. What the hell? Can I just say first off that this is bullcrap? Ugh, I knowing how these corporations run, I wouldn't be surprised if they're monitoring monitoring our emails now. No, okay. I don't really believe that. I'm just upset. I get that Amy didn't have much of a choice. You can only fight a huge corporation taking all of your business for so long. This isn't six feet under. And they s just swooped in and now we have to deal with their BS practices. They're colder than the corpse I picked up from the morgue this morning. Who charges this much for funerals? It feels dirty and exploitative. It is. Let's grab a drink after work. I need to blow off some steam and emails aren't really the most appropriate place to do this. Too late for me, I guess. Funeral, Matthew J, Funeral Director, Rose and Daughters Funeral Home. P.S. If you're reading this Hillside Overlord, good. From Funerals Monthly. Different funeral traditions. Funeral rites, even in our own culture, may be something many of us may be unfam unfamiliar with. For many people, all they know of funeral traditions are what they've seen in the media, but... And I think this goes without saying. Funeral rites and traditions aren't the same across the board. Different cultures have different protocols for cleaning the body to different aspects of the service itself. Religion provides different paths for dealing with a death, but the goal is almost always the same. Offering support, guidance, and ease to the people who are grieving. In Judaism, interment usually begins immediately after someone has passed. Up until a burial, a body is never supposed to be alone, so often families will appoint a shomer, a guardian, to remain with the body. Preparations for burial begin as soon as possible in Muslim traditions as well. Local Islamic community organizations are also often involved and help the family make arrangements for the funeral service and burial. But not all practices are strictly religiously focused. In the aughts in South Korea, the amount of graveyard space began to shrink drastically, causing a law to be passed that required families to remove a loved one's body from its burial place after 60 years. Many families began to cremate more often. But there are also companies that compress remains into beads in turquoise, pink, or black called death beads. 
This also occurs in North America, Europe, and Japan, but remains much more common in South Korea because of the space issue and graveyards and the expenses of cremation. I have heard about that, yeah. And not all practices are somber either. Ever hear of the turning of the bones, or famadehana, a ritual used by the Malagasy people of Madagascar? Famadehana, famadehana has families return to an ancestral crypt, exhume the bodies wrapped in cloth before dancing with the bodies to lively music. This practice is a celebration, remembrance, and a way of keeping the deceased involved in family news. Death can be a difficult time for many people, obviously, but that doesn't mean there isn't a beauty in the ways we choose to honor and celebrate our deceased. From Gen Love. You're in forward. You're invited to a death cafe. I'm increase awareness of death with a view of to helping people make the most of their finite lives. Join us, have a tea and cake talk, and talk with others about our thoughts, fears, and illuminations on death. They do that where your mom was born too? That's really cool. That sounds like a nice way to, like, both celebrate life and, like, really, really appreciate um, them as people, even in passing. Yeah. Then they put them in holes in the mountain with statues of the dead watching on in Indonesia. That's really, really cool. That is really cool. <clears throat> Obviously, like, from my perspective as an American, um, like, a lot of the general funeral culture is really pushed by these huge, like, companies <laughs> that are running everything. And, like, obviously, yes, there's grief, but... They tend to make it a lot more sometimes, obviously. Like, if the family is involved less or not able to be involved as much, it can tend to be really, like, stiff. Um, I don't know. I think, like, obviously I have fucked up, but, like, opinions on death. Um, I feel compared to other people where I don't really consider it being like it um <clears throat> like sure you don't get to talk to them as a person but if you still believe that they're around in any way that's a perfectly normal thing to believe and honestly who knows if it's true? It probably could be. Um, I don't know. I have interesting feelings on death, but I think everyone kind of does. I kind of feel like it's more important to like celebrate the person rather than focus on the fact that they're just gone. But. Other people cope in different ways, obviously. Um, the founder of the Death Cafe movement, John Underwood, once said, when people talk about death and dying, it tends to illustrate their humanity. It doesn't sound fucked up, um, but I tend to have, like, really, like small, like, I don't react much to people dying. Um, I can't- or animals dying, honestly. I kind of, like, it's never really impacted me as much as it has other people, and I've kind of felt a little anxiety about that, because I do feel like I should be grieving more, but it's just, like, never hit me in the same way. And, you know, I kind of feel like I should feel a little... I don't know. Societal pressure, you know? Different for everyone. I'm glad you think it's a good view. Can't really write much right now. I have a lot of work I have to do with an in ingenial hernia from 1750. It's the oldest in our collection. You can even see this bit of paper the surgeon put in after removing the hernia. 
Super cool. I'll send you the link when I have it cataloged. What is my life? What is that sentence I just typed? But anyway, this event that I'm forwarding you is taking place near you. Figured you'd be into it. Might help with that feeling of restlessness you were talking about before. Could be good to talk about some of the things you're feeling. Lots of death positive people there. Sounds like it'll be a safe space. Here we go. From Leah Ionesco. Thank you, Mr. Grant, for agreeing to take care of Jocelyn's cremation. The bike accident was, well, it was more than I was expecting. I know she wanted to be cremated, and to be honest, I don't think I could bear seeing her like that after what happened. Thank you, Leah. Charlotte. Below are the details for our next client. Ensure you follow the requested specifications exactly. After you are done, I will review your work in order to properly evaluate you at the end of the month. Chad Grant. Fuck you. Alright. A bike accident, huh? So, probably got hit by a car. I sound like Joja from Stardew. They are basically that, though. Prepare Mrs. Ionesco's body for cremation. Move the watch, place it on the tray. Put the round identification tag in the coffin. Great. Time to cremate. Yeah, they're, they're the same thing. Fuck capitalism, am I right, boys? And girls? <laughs> boys watching my channel? I don't think that's pot. No. <laughs> it definitely is. Oh, this was a very pretty urn. I'm sure it cost thousands of dollars. Ugh. I wonder why they decided to put, like, physics objects on these bones. It's a little silly. Oh, I still get to pay respects at least. That's good. Well, there's a lot more people here. Should we do a vigil at the spot? Fearless drivers. I swear to god. I was right. Yeah. Hit by a car. I wonder if they're gonna put up a ghost bicycle for her. Uh, there's one where, um... I drive past every so often, and uh, I've always like felt like it's really powerful to me. Um, a ghost bicycle, if you don't know, is when uh, someone gets hit by a car and they die. Uh, occasionally people will paint the bicycle white and then put it where they got hit as a reminder. It's like the same kind of thing as if people get hit by a car, people leave like flowers in that area. Which is something you might have seen before. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's a really. It reminds me every time to like really pay attention. Um, and as someone who used to bike a lot, it was always pretty chilling to me knowing that. Yeah. I'm glad I'm here, but wow, I just need a glass of wine and to binge watch something right now. I have to go through all our things. How am I supposed to decide what to keep? If you need help, I can help. No, thanks I mean, but no. I don't know, it's so intimate. Feels like I should do it myself. She would kill me if others saw the things we have. Yeah, she was kind of a closed book. Except to you. As a biker, I'm always horrified seeing them. Yeah, yeah. I totally get that. <laughs> I agree. It's like... Yeah, it's rough. It's definitely rough. I'm glad that more cities and places are putting in dedicated bike lanes. So hopefully that's happening less, but... There's still lots of places that don't have that. She was kind of a close book, except to you. Yeah, she was special. 
See, mom, on bike lanes are the worst. Oh my god, I don't know what I'd do. I would probably, like, maybe cry. <laughs> so glad it's a cremation. I would have lost it seeing her body. She was always so careful. Wore a helmet, signaled, used the bike lanes. Asshole drivers, they need to pay attention. Have you heard what's happening to the driver? No, I haven't wanted to ask Leah. This has been hard enough on them without asking about the legal ramifications of all this. Yeah, after this, let's see what we can do to help. Shouldn't deal with the death of their partner all by themselves. Oh no. Oh fuck. Shit. Now that's gonna make me cry. <laughs> Oh no. That's... yeah. That's awful. The thing that definitely does get to me and definitely hurts is... Like... People dying really, really young. Or like, young and all. Any anytime people aren't dying on their own terms just makes me like really sad. That's that's the big thing that gets me. Uh oh. Forward rules of code and conduct. Hello. Oh my god, this is so long. As stated in a previous email, who are the new rules of code of conduct I expect you to follow from now on on any premises belonging to Hillside Heritage Enterprises, Inc. First and foremost, there is required uniform and strict dress code from now on. Second most importantly to this is that no tattoos are to be visible. Great. If you have visible tattoos, ensure they are properly covered and hidden. Fuck you! When speaking with customers and clients, consider the opportunity to upsell. Fuck you! I.e. always encourage the deceased loved ones to purchase the higher quality package. We find that encouraging loved ones to think the comfort and style of the deceased as an experience with no price limit on it. Oh my fucking god, I'm gonna fucking... I'm getting this guy! I'm coming over there with embalming fluid, fluid as I speak. Oh no. Additionally, food is no longer allowed to be brought in. Instead, encourage the deceased loved ones to purchase our premium sandwich and appetizer food package. Our partner catering concepts provides high quality food. I doubt that. That will be delivered weekly from their factory. Yep. And can be easily defrosted in the morning of the funeral. Fuck off, you soulless monsters. I expect all of the above changes to be instituted effective immediately to ensure a smooth transition into the high quality services Hillside Heritage Enterprises Inc. is known for. You know those sandwiches are disgusting. They're frosted? Oh. Charlie, I need a drink. Beer after work? P.S. Also, I really want mozzarella sticks. I can be both hungry and angry, and no, I will not say hangry. Ever. <laughs> Fuck. Oh no. I just looked at the next email. Green burial policy. Anything here change? Doesn't look like it. <clears throat> I'm afraid. Hello, Charlotte. I have reviewed a request on behalf of a potential family inquiring if we at Hillside Heritage Enterprise Inc. can and will perform green burials. I have informed you of this in the beginning, but we do not perform green funerals as they are not cost effective. All employees and subsidiaries of Hillside Heritage Enterprises, Inc. must comply. We do not wish to lose potential customers, though, so do try your hardest to convince the families requesting green burials to instead choose a traditional burial package, complete with embalming caskets and vaults instead. Ah! I trust you will ensure we do not lose any customers, Charlotte. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. <laughs> Bomb funerals, why do it? The appeal of a home funeral is apparent for many, especially if the deceased was somebody very close to you. The, the idea of keeping them at home until they are ready to be buried or cremated can be comforting. Yeah, now it's Charlie's problem. 
Fuck this. Like, at first we're draining them of all their money, and also we can't even, like, give them decent respect to give them a burial they want. And this is the company that gets them, quote, more business. Fucking Monopoly. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago that we were taking care of our own deceased, but nowadays people are quick to pass off their loved ones to a funeral home. Most families aren't given the option and assume this is mandatory. That's also part of it. Funeral homes will most always, almost always prepare the deceased using embalming and other methods to appear them to make them appear more alive. But isn't this process counterintuitive to the grieving process? Being around the deceased allows the bereaved to spend a longer period of time with their loved one's body, which can help them mourn or give opportunities to family members or friends to see the deceased one last time before they're taken to be buried or cremated. And the idea of keeping the deceased body at home might sound gross, but it's important to understand that decomposition takes a long time, and you can further slow this process by keeping your home cool and dry. To be around your loved ones and to see them decay naturally is an important part of the grieving process. Home funerals aren't just more intimate, but they are economical. A traditional funeral, complete with body preparation, services, flowers, cards, and many other hidden costs and feeds, can cost upwards of $7,000 to $10,000. So back when they were charging like $6,000 maximum, that was still really cheap. Just people think that their only option is the big places. That's sad. When you're able to take care of your loved one yourself, to wash and dress them, and to organize their viewing from home, the only cost remaining is entirely in the cremation or burial itself. However, it's important to understand that different rules apply given on what state you live in. In all states, it's legal to have your loved one's body at home after they die. States like Alabama, Connecticut, Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, Nebraska, New Jersey, and New York Okay, good to know. Require a funeral director's involvement, from signing the death certificate to overseeing burial or cremation. <clears throat> if this is a route you decide to go for, go for yourself or your loved ones, make sure you follow everything by the book. But just know that this may be an option available for you and your loved ones if you so choose. Dr. Zayas, I just saw a video of a gorilla walking on its hind legs. Like a human being, Charlie. Like a human being. We, as a species, have seen the beginning of our end. I've never seen Planet of the Apes. I've only seen the things making fun of Planet of the Apes. But, you know. Fiction influences reality. <laughs> Latest contract acquisition, the city. I'm proud to announce that Charlotte. Sorry, it's important that he calls her Charlotte. Ugh. I am proud to announce that Hillside Heritage Enterprises Inc. received a contract with the city to dispose of any unclaimed bodies. This is an important revenue stream for us, as I'm sure I don't need to explain to you, Charlotte. Although the Hillside Heritage Enterprises Inc. is being paid a decent wage from the city for these services, cremation is preferred here as it's, it is the most more cost efficient of the two options. We get it, you want all the fucking profit. I get it. The first unclaimed body we'll, we will be handling, handling belongs to a middle-aged man, possibly homeless, whose body has yet to be claimed. No special preparations are needed for this cadaver, aside from cremation. Okay. This is really sad. Because in the cases when people don't have families or they don't know, their families don't know that they've passed away and they're just cremated and nobody knows. Oh, it's awful. It's just so disrespectful. He doesn't seem to have any valuables on him that would be damaged during cremation. So let's just worry about putting his identification tag in the coffin with him. I think the most important thing to do is to be respectful to dead people. Like, be respectful for ev to anyone, obviously, but respecting people's autonomy, even after death, is not a hard thing to do. It, it just sucks. 
And, like, I get that you can't just leave dead bodies if someone dies in the city and no one knows who it is, but... I don't know. I feel like you could do something. Especially because they had no respect in life. Yeah, especially for people who are unhoused. People who are experiencing homelessness. Yeah. You do want to take care in death. It's important. Some people get respect in death and some people don't. And it's awful. Sometimes. This game is really quite good. Oh, right. An unclaimed body, so no one's gonna come. At least I'm here. Rest in peace. I really hope you do. I'm sorry. April 9th, at 19 a.m. I like that she cleans the stuff. That's nice. <clears throat> oh, fuck. Hello, all. We are thrilled to announce that HHEI's subsidiary Rose and Daughters just signed a contract with Morning Valley Hospital allowing us access to all of the cadavers that come through their pediatric and maternity wards. Oh... Oh no... We're excited for the opportunity to work with Morning Valley Hospital, which takes intakes over 100,000 patients and receives over 15 million dollars in funding and donations annually. This will no doubt be a boon for Hillside Heritage and Enterprises Inc.'s bright and sustained future. So this is everyone who dies in childbirth and with complications or Kids who don't... Fuck. Fuck, man. <gasps> oh, 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 she's trying to go independent! <gasps> look, 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 look! What is your business? Enter a keyword and select the best match. Funeral services. Register your business. 11 permits. If you're interested in starting a funeral services business, you may need the following permits and licenses. 1. Articles of Incorporation uh, The applicant must file Articles of Incorporation BCA Form 1 with Central Production and Verification Services Branch in order to incorporate. 2. Registration of a business name for a corporation To register a business name for a corporation under the Business Names Act, the applicant must complete a BNA Form 2 to receive a Master Business License. 3. Registration of a Sole Proprietorship slash General Partnership the applicant must complete a BNA Form 1 with Central Production and Verification Services branch to register a business name for the sole proprietorship slash general partnership under the Business Names Act. Doesn't look like I can... <clears throat> yeah, break away! Let's do- oh, here it is. Charlie, it's official. I put in my two weeks notice. You know how unhappy I am working for Mega Corporation 101. My skills, especially my driving ones, are useful in other professions. I'm not worried about myself. But you? You I am worried about. You're too good for this corporate scum. You actually care about the people you work with and for. Don't let them defeat you, okay? Yeah, so I'll bring beers over next week. We can talk a bit more freely. Oh, someone got a date! I kissed her. Good for you, Jen. Dating a special effects makeup artist, and she's like the coolest person I've ever met in my life. She totally loves Ava's possession and was equally freaked out by the possession scenes. But so utterly delighted of a support group for people who have been possessed. That was your best recommendation in a while, Charlie. You were slipping there and I was getting worried you had lost your taste. But yeah, her name is Lily. Oh. I guess I have a new girlfriend now. <laughs> 
and she's super death positive and isn't freaked out by my work and also isn't too into it like that last dude I saw. Jason, Michael, ugh, I can't remember. I just really like spending time around her. I can talk about whatever I want and it's never a conversation stopper. She also totally gets what I mean when I say that, like working with death and spending so much time thinking about death actually makes me happier. It makes me, everything else feel so much more worth it. You know? Memento Mori or whatever they taught us in that one poetry class we took. We just clicked. Feels good, fun and affirming, like dating should be. I'm thinking of taking her to Maple Meadows. She's super into roller coasters and I like the idea of sharing cotton candy. Or maybe not. I don't want to throw up on the rides. It's seeking sickeningly cute. Then maybe I'll kiss her on top of a ferris wheel, be super corny and cliche for once in my life. Anywho, enough about me for now. I'm still kind of in shock from your last email. You think you're going to do it? You know you have my support 100%, no matter what you decide. Jen, Museum Curator, London Pathology Museum. Water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. Water cremation. I've heard of this. It's really cool. And then we'll howl at the moon together. <laughs> All four of us. We can call it a few different things, like flameless cremation, bit of an oxymoron, but we'll let it slide. Or, perhaps more commonly, resumation. Its technical name, though, is actually alkaline hy hydrolysis. Whenever we want to call it, it's here and it's an environmentally friendly alternative to traditional cremation. But for the sake of this newsletter, let's call it water cremation. We all know that traditional cremation burials take a huge toll on the environment. High energy consumption, the adds to greenhouse gas effect being one of the chief amongst them, and water cremation is an alternative method available for the eco-conscious amongst. How does it work? It's basically a water-based chemical process that uses a really strong alkali in water heated up very high, about 750 degrees, or 700, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Might be around 750 centigrade. Uh, it basically works like a sped up version of natural decomposition. The excess water gets put through the same water treatment process as any sewer water in the free at a factory. And alkaline hydrolysis uses significantly less energy than a traditional cremation process. Neat, huh? It's been around for a bit and in some places became legal around the end of the first decade of the odds. Not a bad alternative for those who don't want their death to have any greater impact on the environment than necessary. That makes sense, considering now we know that, like, you don't... The goal is to have the body dissolved and or dealt with, and then you crush the bones into powder, and that's what makes the ashes. Doing that without heat, without fire, is... yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> oh boy. Home funeral for my wife. Dear Mr. Grant, regarding the last time we spoke, my daughters and I would still prefer to host a home funeral ourselves and keep my, my wife here until she's ready to be buried. I just want to make sure she's taken care of. Her heart attack was so sudden and we don't know what to do. We just want to make sure she has a proper send off. Thanks. Kofi Dimka. Dear Mr. Dimka. Dimka, Dimka. I understand your desire to keep your wife at home, but I assure you, the best way to honor your wife is through a traditional funeral package instead. Fuck you! I promise your wife's funeral with us will be a beautiful, intimate gathering where all of her beloved friends and family can come together and say their goodbyes. A standard embalming will allow for everyone to view your wife, ensuring that everyone can see her one final time as she was. Beautiful, peaceful, and courageous. You don't even fucking know her! Letting us take care of the food with our prepared food service will ensure you don't have a single thing to worry about on this day. She would be happier if you did this attitude. Yeah, I hate that too. It's gross. The worst part is they're keeping their original name, so it's like, oh, it's still family owned. No. You and your daughters are going through a hard time right now. Let us here at Rose and Daughters make this difficult time a little easier for you. And again, he does this for a living. So he's good at getting people to buy into this, which sucks. Uh-oh, I saw the word upsell. I'm worried. Dear Mr. Grant, 
Okay, we'll take the traditional funeral package. Thank you for considering us in there in this hard time. Charlotte, I see you were not able to convince the Dimka family to take a standard funeral. I had to contact them myself in order to not lose the sale. Please read the enclosed emails for a lesson on how to properly upsell potential customers. I don't want to see that we've lost any customers because of your refusal to upsell. This is part of your job. Gar your arf bark bark. This guy really fucking sucks. Leave, 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 quick, 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 leave, leave. <laughs> I'm working on it, I'm working on it. The deceased family has asked for an open casket funeral. Let's start by cleaning the body. This isn't fair. You didn't want this, and I, or your husband didn't want this. Uh, her co-worker put in his two weeks. I don't know if she did. There's also something to be said for this, like... And people have said this before in articles, like, coping, but... There's something to be said about the embalming process making them look like a little less like people because it's so much about making them look like they're still alive but in a way that you know they're still dead, which can be really unsettling. Also, we can't show titties in this game. No boobs allowed. Yeah, make them look alive as possible so you can put them under the earth. It it really doesn't make sense. And it, like... I think in some cases it contributes to people, like, having weird ideas about death. Like, you don't want to put alive people in the earth. No, you don't. I, like... And also, you know, it's expensive. It's not environmental as environmentally friendly as it could be. It, I I understand people who do want to preserve the body, but I don't know. Like if it's what they want, it's what they want. I'm not gonna like say it's stupid to have that, but it it can feel really unsettling sometimes. Yeah, to each their own, but personally, it... Yeah. I think it comes out of people's fear of death. Like, I know that embalming in, like... Um... Cultures in the past, like... That was to, like... Preserve their body as a vessel for their soul. Which makes sense. That makes sense to me. But now it's just so that they can look nice when you put them in the ground. And if you, like, I know it can be hard to look at a dead loved one. And see that they look dead. But... I don't know. Preservation and honey always seem dope to you? That does sound really cool. Um... I think that, like, oh yeah, bog bodies and, like, frozen or, like, glacier preserves or glacier preserve fossils or snow preserve fossils. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's so many different ways that bodies can be preserved and, like, through nature that are so interesting. Um, and we, like, I don't think it's a bad thing to, like, have this procedure done it's not inherently it can like it's maybe environmentally unfriendly but that's like the worst part of it. it i just think that if you don't want it you shouldn't have to get it 
you know, Professor wants his body to be thrown into a volcano when he dies. That sounds fun, too. Well, I mean, maybe not for the people who have to figure out how to get someone to let them throw it into a volcano, but... <laughs> Mike will take care of Mr. Dimka's ma Mrs. Dimka's makeup, as well as dressing and putting her in the casket. I guess Mike's the new guy. Good game. Hi, Nora, we're talking about death. A lot. <laughs> I guess that's what this game's about. This game is very good. I'm starving. Why do these things always make me so hungry? This game is super well made. I I've been I have been playing it for much longer than the recommended amount of time. <laughs> Cause I've just been talking so much about it. I like it a lot. Also, this is shitty food and you shouldn't eat it. It's literally frozen. You're always hungry. It's so cold in here. I think they have the air conditioning on too high. Yeah, let's go for a walk later. It It's really nice out. Would be good to stretch my legs. How hot is it in Philly today? Do you think we did the right thing? I feel bad not doing what Mom asked for. I know, honey, but what that Chad guy said seemed right. I don't want to dishonor her memory by letting her rot. But... Oh... This is so sad. And I know it's gonna get... I'm gonna get hit again. Feels like 91. Oof. Yeah, that's rough. Yesterday was like not even in the 80s and because I was just like picking apples and it was like 70% humidity, I was just dying. It sucked. I think I was like 78, 80. Yeah, I just want mom to know I loved her. I wish I hadn't yelled at her before. Shh, it's okay. She knew you loved her. Fights happen. Don't be hard on yourself. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to miss her. Me too. This feels so impersonal. She would have hated this. Yeah, but... I don't know. They must have had their reasons. They were scammed. Hmm. Oh, hey, what did you think of that trailer I sent you? Oh, yeah, I heard that show is so good. I saw the video of the one kid actor doing karaoke. Rest in peace. I'm sorry I had to do that to you. I know it's not what you wanted. August 30th, 9 a.m. New practice, new practice, new practice, new practice, yes! I was like, that's a big time jump. Congratulations. Charlie, dear, I am so proud of you. I knew there was something special in you when I hired you for Rose and Daughters. If there's anything I can do for you, please do not hesitate to ask. I'm always happy to help. Best wishes, Amy Rose. Yes, I sorely miss you and Matthew's terrible sense of humor. From Matthew Jeffrey. You'll never believe what new job I'm working at now. Open this email to find out. Hey, Charlie! When I first became a hearse driver, I was told that my most important job wasn't steering. It was sympathizing. I respectfully disagree. And thankfully, I concentrated on my driving skills since I'm now working as a, wait for it, bus driver. A school bus driver, Charlie. Can you believe that? Pretty sure if I said the most important part of my job wasn't steering, I'd be fired immediately. Didn't know how else to tell you. But for some reason, I was worried you'd think less of me. But I don't know why. You've never been the judgmental kind. And besides, corpses are way easier to deal with than children. Screaming children, might I add. I actually love it. These kids are going to be pretty cute. But don't tell Amy that I told you that. She was always harping on me for not having any kids and for being all cynical about them. Congrats on the new business, Charlie. I'm proud of you. I'll swing by your new place one day and show you my new wheels. Maybe we can grab a bite to eat. 
Be seeing ya, Matthew J. From Gem Love. Congratulations on your new business. From Gem Love to Charlie. Charlie, I am so happy for you. I know it's been a rough year for you. Seriously, I think our wine intake saw a bazillion percent increase, but you've stuck through it all like a champ. You deserve this. Finally being your own boss was such a great move for you. No more trying to explain anything you don't want to. I'm trying not to be too cheesy right now. Can't wait to be home next week for a visit and to check out your new space. Always, Janelle. P.S. Have you heard about these green burial pods? When I find the link in my 1 million open tabs, I'll shoot it over to you. I have heard of those. Those are cool. Magnolia Forest. Funeral Home and Nature Burial Park. Natural Burial Park. Oh, that's... Oh, this is gonna be so good! I'll just park this school bus outside a funeral parlor. <laughs> Listen, he's an excitable guy! Our services. Magnolia Forest, named after the magnolia trees that surround our funeral home, specializes in at-home funerals and green burials in our natural burial park. Our goal is to empower families and encourage them to have a closer relationship with death and the dying process. The death of a loved one can be a confusing and sometimes traumatic time, and we want you to feel fully involved in your loved one's death care decisions. Whether you're looking to care for your loved one from the comfort of your home, be present during their cremation, or bury them in our natural cemetery. Magnolia Forest is here to work with you and provide these simple but intimate and meaningful options. Natural Burial Park Our natural burial park allows the body to return to the earth and recycle naturally. It is intended as an environmentally sustainable alternative to existing funeral practices. Our park has room for bodies of all sizes and ages, as well as beloved pets. Families also have the option to bury their loved ones themselves if they so choose. Prices. We believe in being transparent about our prices and practices. We are happy to explain all of our prices, work with your budget, and hope to make you feel comfortable and confident in your decisions. Let us know if we can answer any of your questions. Home funeral, $1,000 all-inclusive. Green burial and service, $2,250 for adults, all-inclusive. Infants are buried at no charge. We can provide a 3 by 3 plot and help opening and closing the grave. Oh, that's so sweet. Direct crem cremation, $600, all-inclusive. Mm, I'm so excited for her! From Eileen Hansen. Dear Charlie, today's the day already, isn't it? I can't believe how quickly this has come up. Thank you for your understanding and for your work. You've made today easier already. See you at 1pm. Best. Eileen Hansen. I'll see you soon. I love that- I love that she has the butterflies and mushrooms and... Are these fruits? I can't tell what these are. I love her posters. I love all of her plants. Oh, this is such a nice office. Oh, it's such a beautiful... Oh, this is such a beautiful area. This hurts. I thought it would be easier, but it's not. It hurts so much, but thank you. For helping me give her the funeral she's always wanted. And they plant a tree... As a headstone. Oh, this is so sweet. Anyway, I think we're ready to get started now. This is a beautiful. Oh my god, I'm crying. <laughs> this is this game is beautiful. Thank you so much for making this. I am glad. I I didn't think it would take me two hours. I thought it would take me less time, but um, wow. Um, it is a cute ending. It's really really good. I'm glad I could play this. I've been looking at it for a long time, but I was like, oh, it's only an hour long. I don't want to just, like, do it and, you know, it helped keep you sane at work. Oh, that makes me so happy. 
I don't want to do it and then have like another hour and a half that I might not be doing anything and just like not have anything else lined up. Yeah, I'm glad I could do this. I thought it was going to take me an hour, but you know. I'm glad it took me longer. I'm glad we could have so many fun dis uh, discussions about it. Thank you for this game. I'm happy I could play it. What happens if I continue? <laughs> Okay, it just stops me at here. Good to know. Game is very, 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 very good. It was a very good experience. I love talking about things during it. 